In every heart lies the powerful force, the desire. Desire that drives us forward to wake up early, to endure, to sacrifice. It's this very desire that leads us on the quest for eternal happiness, health or prosperity. Imagine capturing that desire, your deepest wish on the simple piece of paper in Osame Fuda. This wish slip bearing your name and prayer is the personal offering to the Divine, a tradition carried out in every temple you visit on a profound journey across Japan. But what pulls us towards the sacred places? What is a temple, truly? Is it merely a structure, a designated holy ground, or is it the embodiment of our deepest beliefs manifested through rituals, statues and the collective spirit of those who seek? As we embark on the journey to the 88 temples, we are not just traversing physical distances, we are navigating the deepest of our desires. This pilgrimage is a testament to the power of wishful thinking, embodied by the tradition of Osame Fuda, where each slip of paper represents a step closer to understanding our deepest yearnings. Through these ancient practices, our focus sharpens day by day on what truly matters to us. This isn't merely a trek through temples, it's the pilgrimage of the soul, a journey that seeks to answer not just the question of what the temple signifies, but to understand the very essence of our desires and our place in the cosmos. Join us as we explore the sacred, following the trail of desires encapsulated in Osame Fuda to uncover the spiritual heart of Japan through its 88 temples of Shikoku. We were not camping people. We had never used a tent before, yet given that staying in Japan can be expensive, we decided to bring a tent with us for this grand journey. We fell in love with Japan. Every nuance of its culture and tradition captivated us, from origami to karate to sushi to sakura. And when we've learned about the famous millennia-old walk crossing the most sacred places of Japan called 88 Temples of Shikoku, we didn't waste a minute before making our way to the land of the rising sun. Every significant culture and belief system has its own famous pilgrimage. Be it the Camino de Santiago in Spain, Jerusalem, Mecca or the Golden Temple in India. Japan is no exception. There is a 1,200 km walk around the island of Shikoku, just south of Hiroshima, initiated by the Kobodaishi a Buddhist monk. This pilgrimage, undertaken as a part of ascetic training and followed by the generation since, makes this 1,200 years old walk a unique experience of self-discovery. Passing by 88 temples, through four different prefectures over a variety of terrains, Pilgrims collect stamps in the book, which then serves as a passport to their afterlife existence. However, we were seeking some luck in this life. Having quit our stressful job some time ago, we decided to walk around the world, driven not only by the beauty of nature and the scenic views, but also by the quest for the inner peace that had been lost after years of stressful job routines, appointments and complications. 
We've yearned to return to simplicity with basic needs like good food, laughter and a great company. We had already experienced log walks and pilgrimages, having walked many caminos, but we were unfamiliar with Buddhist traditions, rituals, temples, bells, monks, and also snakes, Japan in general or the Japanese language. Let's just say it was more than the journey. It was a leap into unknown, a venture far from our comfort zone. So we had three months to cover 1,200 kilometers by foot. And within the first week, we already felt it might not be enough. Our adventure seemed simple at the start. Visit 88 temples, collect their stamps, find places to sleep, eat and do it all over again next day. But the journey was far from simple. Uh, we're just about to step into the first temple or rather first shop because before everything we need to buy um, an attire outfit with everything that involves and then we can start the journey the journey has already started though a long time ago um, yeah a long time ago baby yeah. I wish you good pilgrimage I wish you too. <laughs> first up we realized that to be a Shikoku pilgrim we needed special gear for the pilgrimage, not just our usual hiking clothes. No fancy pantsy fast drying ultralight gear, but rather a kimono, a hat called kasa, stamp book and many other. We decided not to carry everything, leaving behind some of the traditional items to save space for our tent and sleeping bags. And that turned out to be the choice we would regret later. Starting in the temple one, we've learned that the path could go in any direction. A circular route like a Buddhist philosophy of life. In each temple, we follow the set of rituals. Washing hand, ringing the bell, lighting the candles, also offering incense, making a wish, giving donations and reciting mantras and sutras. It was a lot to remember and at first we felt a bit lost. The only thing we were used to was a meditation which helped us to ease into unknown. Stepping out of the temples, it wasn't getting any easier. More of a known language and tradition, food, even the cars were driving on a different side of the road. At the end of the day, filled with temple visits, we've looked for the place to stay. We had to book many spots in advance, which meant we couldn't just decide on the whim where to sleep. Our choices ranged from the modern hotels and traditional ryokans to pilgrims' houses, each offering a different slice of life on the pilgrimage. And also, many times we stayed on the camping grounds. Each temple had its own vibe. From the dog temple to the birth temple to the end the long life temple, they were all over the place, in the middle of the cities, on the plains, or tucked into the mountainside, and each had a long history of welcoming pilgrims. We soon realized that the environment where all is unknown 
Watching and learning was the best way to understand what this pilgrimage was about. Baby, where are we going? To the waterfall training. And what is this? I have no idea, <laughs> but you sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> we were checking out the way to get to Temple 13 in the guidebook and we found this waterfall training. What is this waterfall training? Let's Google it. It was 10 minutes meditation under waterfall, cold water waterfall. So we said, yeah, we hate cold water. Why shouldn't we do it? <laughs> we, we love doing things. <laughs> we love doing things. <laughs> We love doing things that we hate. That was a great idea, no? We love going out of the comfort zone. I remember that day very well. After nearly 10 days of walking, we overnight in that camping site next to the river, not far from the place, outside the official guides, where we were to try the samurai waterfall meditation. So first we had to undergo the rituals and prayers. Faith in the good intention of the monk was our great ally as we couldn't understand neither the language nor the rituals. And after that we went to find our destiny, 43 meters waterfall. And we finally arrived. And by the time we reach the 28th temple, it hits us. Every part of this journey was designed to help us to connect more deeply. The stuff we carried, the sutra necklace, the incense and the candles. The pieces of attire we didn't have. Once we started wearing the pilgrim's clothes and the joining in the chants and incense, something inside us shifted. For the first time, we felt connected to everyone who had walked this path before. Visiting each temple became more than a ritual. It was a chance to reflect and understand what we were truly seeking. When we got to the Temple 28, we realized our pilgrimage had really begun. Converting from the mere outside adventure to inner transformation. It was more than just a long walk. It was the journey to discover the personal growth. That night, as we looked for the place to stay, we found nothing. It dawned on us just how much this journey meant. We called many places and all were booked. No choices were left. This is where the journey really started. Wow. 